In this video, we're going to be going over a plugin called Quickscope. So as always, you can find all of the commands that I run in this video, as well as all the configuration over on my blog. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link in the description for my NeoVim config, the one that I'm working on here. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, I'd appreciate it if you left me a star or forked it or something. So let's get started. So to install, basically, you know, use your favorite plugin manager and just install this plugin. Uh, this is the syntax for Vimplug, and I have a video on that if you're interested. Um, create the config file. So what I typically do is that I create a config file somewhere in the directory, and I just source it in init.vim, and I think that just keeps init.vim a little bit cleaner, right? So you'll just take this config down here, put it in this file, and then just source it in your init.vim. Um, all right, so let's go over some of what uh, Quickscope does for us. And I think it's a little more obvious to see than it is to really talk about it. So if you didn't know, you already had access to all the commands that I'm essentially going to be showcasing in this video, right? So the ones we're going to be looking at are going to be F, T, uppercase F, and uppercase T. So what I'll do first is I'll show you F, right? F will essentially just let you jump to um, the first occurrence of a character, right? Um, so what it'll do is if I press C, it'll jump me to that C. Then if I press semicolon, it will jump me to the next C, and then if I press semicolon, it will jump me to the next one, and so on and so forth. Um, I think to make this a little more obvious, what I'll do is enable this. So F, C, semicolon, 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 right? And so that's just going to take you to every single C in the line, right? Now that came with Vim, that came with NeoVim, that's nothing new, right? The same thing with T. If I press T, uh, if, and if I jump to C, right, then what, C, what that'll do is, remember F put me directly on top of C, so when I, press, when I press T, and then I press C, it puts me right in front of C, and then if I press semicolon right in front of C, right in front of the next C, right in front of the next C, so on and so forth. All right. So now that we know what F and um, T do, right, what we can do is, and, and the uppercase ones are just going to be the same thing in reverse, right? So if I jump to the end of this line, right, and then if I press uppercase F, and then if I press C, I'm just going to start jumping to all the Cs. And if I press semicolon, I'm going to keep going to all the Cs. Now another cool thing that we can do is we can press comma, and we'll start going backwards. So that's another thing that you can do. And then the same exact thing will happen with T, uppercase T. If I press uppercase T and say I wanted to go to um, C again, it'll put me right in front of the C but in the other direction, right? So we'll just keep doing that. And you'll notice that I'm in front of the C every single time. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll actually talk about Quickscope now that we just have seen those motions, right? So what Quickscope does for us is it will highlight the character, the first character um, that is available for a word. So you'll notice that it's highlighting the N in config. And why is that? Why is it not highlighting the C? Well, it should be obvious, right? Because the C is used in touch. And so if I jump to C, I jump right to that first C. Also, there is an O in touch. So I can't jump to O, right? I mean, I can jump to O, but it won't take me to config. So the first letter that gets me to the word config is N, right? Now the same thing is true with NVim directly after that, right? Because N is used in config, so I can't use it in NVim. So I could always just press V and jump right over there. And it's nice because it highlights it for me, right? But what also you can do is, is if, if it's the second one that's highlighted and you want it to get right to the beginning of the word, you can just press, um, and instead of pressing F, what I'll do is I'll press T, and then I'll press V, and that'll bring me right before, because remember that brings me right before, like, before the occurrence of a character, right? So that's nice if you want to come over here and real quick type like DW and delete it, or CW and change it, or, you know, whatever you want to do, right? Um, so that's basically all the functionality, and you probably saw it as I was even going through all the other motions, you know, all of this stuff hi like being highlighted, right? So one other thing you might be noticing is, um, let's try and make this a little bit bigger. One other thing you might be noticing is that when I press F, well, how come that second V 
is a different color. So the reason that second V is a different color is because, and this only happens with the first and the second one. The first and the second one are the only ones that will be assigned colors. So, so the first one's already taken by that color. The second one, um, to get to that word, I can just, I'm going to have to press V again, right? Or semicolon again to get there, but it will highlight it for me and let me know to get to the beginning of this word, the, use V, right? So what you can do is you can just press V and I already know I'm going to have to press semicolon and I get there really fast. I can delete it. I could, I don't know, maybe you want to like change the extension on the file really fast, something like that, right? Okay. So essentially that's all Quickscope really gets you. I think it's good, like it's a good addition to like, you know, Vim purists who don't want to add a ton of conf or a ton of, um, a ton of plugins or anything like that. I think it's just useful anyway, and it's kind of my preferred way of jumping around horizontally now. I mean, not my preferred way of doing it because I'm doing it the same way I always was, but it's a nice addition to jumping around horizontally. Like it's just, it, it's definitely made me faster. It's, just, it's nice uh, visual cues to get around, I think. Um, so this was the configuration that I used. So essentially, um, you'll only be able to do this for 150 characters. I think any more than that, and it's, you know, getting a little bit crazy anyway. You probably can't keep that on one eye full anyway, right? Um, now, if you don't set this one, it will automatically highlight as you move around. So if as I move around and I got to this line, it would automatically be like this. And then if I got to this line, it would automatically highlight. And same with this line. And I found that kind of distracting, so I just turned that off. But I do like to see it when I do press F. I just, I don't know, I think it's a nice visual cue. Um, these are the colors here. So this is how I got the first blue color. That's that blue color. Uh, this is that red color, or maybe that's a green color actually. But, you know, that'll be your second color. Um, these are the commands. So the commands that I showed you in the video are the exact commands that are right here essentially. You're only going to be pressing one character as opposed to in the video with Sneak where you'd be pressing two. Uh, and here is a link to the repo. I'll put in the bottom. I have it over here. Just make sure to, you know, go over there, give them a star, you know, support the, uh, support the project, support all the software projects that you use, you know. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. So make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.